Now we're going to be talking about something very exciting in the world of uh, turf here in Central Texas and probably throughout the state. It's called Habiturf. It's a product uh, developed by the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, and I'm joined by one of the individuals responsible for that, Mark Simmons, who is Director of Research and Consulting at the Wildflower Center. Great to have you with us. Good to be here. Now we're going to be talking about Habiturf, which is the, the kind of the branding uh, for this beautiful blend of native grasses. But I want to start by talking about your interest in in, in grasses and turf. Uh, you're obviously from Britain, which is a lush and green place. Is that to the root of all this? It has a lot to do with it. Yeah. So I was I was you know we had a lawn at home which I had to mow on a regular basis. <laughs> right. So I I fell in love with that lawn mm -hmm. because I had to love it. Um, but also I was I was driven around by my parents to all the country estates and mm -hmm. so lawn's such a you know an essential part of the, mm -hmm. the countryside there as it is here right so uh, when i came here um you know in 2000 you know and i saw there was this 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 problem with lawn because of the water issue of and course. so that g gave yeah. me thinking well how can we how can we fix that how can we get a local solution mm -hmm. to this problem Right. Okay. And you've come up with a, a, a great solution by all accounts, and it's called, as I indicated, Habiturf. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a blend of three different native grasses, correct? Yes, it, sometimes four. We're actually okay. keeping it quite loose right now because it's, mm -hmm. the research is ongoing, but certainly there, there's three main ones, okay. but we've been adding some others as well. Okay. Well, uh, tell us what they are. Right. Well, the, ma the main uh, um, ingredient, if you will, is the buffalo grass. Mm -hmm. The second one is blue grama. Now, these are all native, native okay. to Texas. And the third one is one called curly mesquite, not right. to be mistaken with the, the tree. This is, right. a, this is a small grass that's very similar to buffalo grass. Right. And right. then the other ones we've been looking at are something like called Texas grammar, and there's a mm -hmm. couple of others as well which blend in very well. And it, there's something powerful about the blend, because people have been trying, for example, to use buffalo grass by itself for a right. long time as a turf but have been disappointed with the results. Why is it different with a blend? Yeah, it's a good point. And that's what I found when I got here, that people say, buffalo grass, why isn't it working? It's getting weedy. And what we found was it's really applying Ecology 101 to mm -hmm. the turf. You know, if you think about natural grasslands, and I've worked in several grasslands around the world, when you look at them, they're made up of, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of species. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to create a lawn made of one species, you've got a very unstable ecologically situation. And you don't see that in, in nature. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes it very prone to weeds in particular. Right. So by filling in with other species which look identical, it still mm -hmm. looks like a lawn, but you're taking up that ecological space that mm -hmm. weeds would take up. So it really isn't a complicated a concept. It just really hasn't been applied to the lawn before. Okay, and it is now commercially available, mm -hmm. correct? Um, is it going to be available in turf? I'm real curious about that. Right, yes, and it's just they put in seed. There's a grower in San Antonio who's mm -hmm. now putting it down to sod, for, and that will be available ne this coming spring, okay. 2014. So available commercially uh, at the Wildflower Center is yes. one location, but also online, I guess. You can buy it online, yes, from uh, DK Seeds in San Antonio. Okay, great. Great. So uh, this is a, a real alternative for us now. N and when we, I talked with people in the past about uh, establishing Buffalo, I knew it was really important to start well. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's still essential, really, with habit turf. Uh, everybody who starts turf, what, regardless of what they use, I think should pay attention to pre prepping the site. But what's, what's essential with the habit turf? I, and you're absolutely right. I mean, this is true for all plants, as you yeah, know, and right. particularly true for lawns. If you want something to be drought hardy, you want to get those roots down. Right. So that soil preparation is critical. And what we say is, really try and loosen up that top six inches of soil and mm -hmm. certainly add some organic matter, a good quality mm -hmm. compost. Uh, we've actually done a, a, a video on the soil prep for Habiturf, which is on YouTube. If you just type in Habiturf on YouTube, you can see a, a short video on, on the cool. preparation. Because mm -hmm. you're absolutely right, because too often they'll, with people are putting in seed on compacted soil and you know you can put any seed down that and it's not going to do well no. so it is essential and uh, 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 you can't really underestimate that and uh, people want to do the right thing they want water conserving plants they mm -hmm. understand the the challenge that our region faces regarding water but they are also looking for silver bullets and magic yes, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and they and i think it's really important to underscore the point that uh if you start well, if you make that investment and do the labor up front of preparing the site, then maybe you do get the magic. <laughs> and I think you're right. That attitude, I think our attitude towards landscapes generally mm -hmm. 
has got to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just about lawns. You know, when you see, you drive around uh, Austin in summer and you'll see contractors out there mowing and mowing and mowing, even when the, the grass is brown and clearly doesn't need mowing. Right. We sort of, our relationship with turf has become dysfunctional and kind of <laughs> codependent yeah, and it's right. become a mess. So right. the, pre the preparation mm -hmm. um, is just one part of, I think, changing the relationship. And also on the other hand, what to expect from the lawn. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, from our landscapes, we can expect them to use less water, which is one of the reasons we sure. developed this. And this lawn also is habitat. I mean, it's not just a, a lawn that we can enjoy, but it's habitat, it's host plant for butterflies. So mm -hmm. I think that whole, the, the richness of nature um, uh, is often ignored. And I think lawns in particular, the yeah. industrial lawn has kind of drifted away from that. Well, you're, I, I like that phrase, industrial lawn. And often that is the look too. It's regimented, mm -hmm. clipped. And, and, and I think one of the beautiful things about the native grasses is that you can leave them unmowed if you prefer. Right. You yes. know, and I, I actually think they're extremely beautiful that way. We were quite surprised when we first were getting it out into market because mm. I, you know, being British, I like the the low regimented right. clean lines lawn. I like one right. like that, but equally I like prairie. So, mm -hmm. um, but we found that a lot of people felt they wanted exactly that. They actually didn't want to mow it, and you can mow mm -hmm. this as few, mm -hmm. few as three or four times a year, mm -hmm. and they want it to grow a bit longer and fall over in a sort of mm -hmm. shag pile carpet look. Right. So and that's been very popular, which surprised us. Well, you know, big questions about uh, uh, have a turf would be uh, how does it stand up to family life? You mm -hmm. know. Pets, uh, foot traffic, kids playing in the yard. Well, we've got I've got it in my place, and I've got two little boys, twelve and eight okay. years old, um, and it's fine everywhere except where you know the um, first base is. You know where that <laughs> place is, that does get a bit worn. And we actually did some compaction trials at the mm -hmm. Wildflower Center. And mm -hmm. we found out, you know, it was dro we drove over it like 10 times a week with a little golf cart to okay. sort of simulate foot traffic. Okay. And we, f we found it stood up very well okay. to that kind of amount. But for a soccer field, probably not. But for mm -hmm. a standard back lawn, perfectly all right. Okay. Now, a lot of people, when they think of the native turf, they think, oh, I have a shady lawn. This won't mm -hmm. work for me. Now, what's, what's, what's the reality of that situation? With this, this is, it does like full sun. It mm -hmm. actually does better with a little bit of shade. When I say a little bit, I mean, it doesn't get, you know, 10 hours of mm. Texas sun mm. at, during the summer. It can, we, we found if it's got at least four to five hours of direct sun, mm -hmm. and that maybe could be three in the morning, three in the after, afternoon, mm -hmm. then then it's fine. If you want to go beyond that, and certainly under a thick pecan tree or live oak tree, it's yeah. not gonna do well. Okay. So this is really a sun, definitely a sun, full sun okay. species. But, uh, but uh, around the edge of, the, of shade plants, uh, it will work. Yes, I mean, I've seen it, I've got it under a Spanish, I've got a Spanish oak in the middle of my lawn, for instance, mm -hmm. and it's fine up to there, but the Spanish oak is limbed up, so where the sure. sun can get in in the morning, evening, it can cope with it. Okay, very good. And wh what about the maintenance after establishing, in terms of fertilizing, watering routine, et cetera? Watering we've got down, it can probably do less, but we've got it down to watering the equivalent of about half an inch every two weeks. Wow. But we think we can go lower. That's as low as we went this last year, mm -hmm. but it stayed green. Now mm -hmm. remember, these species, they grow drought dormant. If you right. don't water them, they'll go brown. They're not dead, they just mm -hmm. go asleep. Right. So if we do get a, a situation where we have to pull the water off, which, can, which you know is going to happen again, e right. you're just not going to lose your lawn. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can give it, if you're going along two months with no rain, mm -hmm. it will be good to give it something, sure. the hand watering, just because though it's brown, it's still alive. Right. Um, but so the watering is, you know, we think we can go down probably to once every two weeks, once every three weeks, maximum. Mm -hmm. we'll be pushing that limit this year. Um, in terms of fertilizer, once it's established, it really doesn't need much work. It really doesn't need much in the way of um, a fertilizer. Mm -hmm. I think if you've got a fa fairly heavy use and you like to mow it a lot, like I do mine, mm -hmm. you may want to put in a, a, a fall or a spring dressing mm -hmm. of an organic fertilizer. But right. do use an organic one because these species do rely on mycorrhizae in the soil to, 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 right. to, to, to forage for phosphorus and nitrogen. So mm -hmm. you don't want to mess with that. Good. Um, as far as pesticides are concerned, the, one of the things we did test was weeds. Mm -hmm. We sowed in dandelions, um, dandelion seeds, mm -hmm. which I harvested from my own garden. <laughs> I had plenty of those. <laughs> Threw those in, and we found out it stands up to weeds much better than, say, common Bermuda grass. Excellent. So, no, you are, it's not, I'm not saying no weeds, but you'll certainly get fewer. Okay. Well, again, we've been talking about a very exciting new product for Central Texans and for Texas uh, and people throughout the Southwest, really, right, uh, yeah. this would be applicable. It's called Habit Turf, developed by the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. 
available here at the Wildflower Center and also online. So, Mark, uh, thank you so much for being our guest today. Uh, real pleasure having you here, and uh, we, we wish you every success, at, continued success with Habit Earth at the Wildflower Center. Oh, thank you, Tom. All right, coming up next is our friend Daphne.